So there was a request to see, um, you know, what it looks like preparing out a fossil that's partially exposed. So I thought, hey, let's do it with this little trial bite, Pygidium. Um, this is the back end right here. Um, the front of, well, the rest of the trial bite would be here, but it's not here. It's usually just the tail isolated, just the Pygidium. And to give you a sense of scale, here's my finger. So the whole length of this is less than a centimeter. I'm also noticing over here, which I didn't even realize, there's the pattern of um, of lenses of a compound eye of a trilobite. Maybe the same trilobite, maybe a different one. Closely related, for sure, if not the same individual or even the same species. But anyway, um, so this is just a regular dental tool, and you can see based on the wear here at the tip. Uh, I've already used this, and it's gotten a little bit uh, dull at the tip, but good enough for this sediment. Um, this is from the Decora group, so it tends to be pretty shaly. I just moistened it, and you can see this muddy material just easily scrape away. Not all rock is this friendly. However, <laughs> the Decora group is fairly reliable with this kind of thing, which is why the fossils naturally weather out so nicely. And so what I'm doing here is just with a soft touch, not putting too much pressure on, just going through and almost with the side of it, see, just pressing and seeing if I can get some purchase to chip away some of this. Sometimes a bigger chip and sometimes a smaller chip. But this is just a first pass. I'm not trying to get down to the fossil. If that happens, okay, great. But really just trying to get an outline or at least just get through some of this material. So it gets to this point, and then at this point, it's usually helpful to brush it off. Uh, actually, to wash it off is even better, so I'll do a quick wash. And you can see it actually looks a little messier now because some areas are better exposed than others, and you're like, oh, I ruined it, it doesn't look so good. No, you keep going. And just follow... Actually, there's still, I still need to do some more removing material here before I get into the detailed work. So I'm going to keep pressing away at this, trying to get little flakes to flake off. And again, just dental pick, which, you know, you can buy on the internet. Not expensive, not specialty. Let me get over to this other side, switch the orientation so the light works a little better over here. It's focused. Yeah, it's as good as the focus gets. And again, as soon as I can't see what I'm doing anymore. And I may go a little bit farther around it just to give myself some space and I don't know, in case the rest of the trial bite is there, I run into it. And to just define where the end of it is. And then, so this is just scraping with the tip, but with almost no pressure, no downward pressure, just scraping and pulling material away from, pulling it towards me. And easier to do in some orientations than others. Oops. It 
really helps to know exactly what the shape is of the thing that you are uncovering before you start uncovering it. Uh, that's not always possible. If, if it's something that is new, or you don't understand the angle of that, or you just don't know what it is before you start digging. But if you can figure out what it is, then maybe put a drawing, you know, print out a drawing of it, and put it next to your workstation so that you can keep referring to it. And, you know, not miscounting the number of segments and then scraping right into something because pretty much every one of the species you will run into has been really well documented and uh, photographed or drawn with incredible precision by some past paleontologist. And it's also a really great way to get to know the detailed morphology of a species is to really work with every little detail as it comes out of the rock. It can be hard to find the right angle sometimes. Oh, that was another trilobite piece. Here's the eye, and this is the right cheek. The front of the trilobite is at the front. The visual surface isn't really preserved, but that's where the eye would be. Here's the genal spine coming off the cheek. A lot of interesting stuff on this rock. There's actually another, but the same thing here, the eye, part of the cheek. But back to our little trilobite pachidium. And I keep changing the orientation so I get better, um, I don't know, all different insights from the lighting of, oh, I didn't quite get this yet. Oh, I need to give myself more room here, etc. And you can see that at this point I've gotten most of the really big chunks of sediment off, but there's still a lot to just scrape off like this. And then there'll be a lot to go over, even in these tiny little crevices, which I may not be able to get fully into with this tool. Uh, and then, of course, there's, there's other tools beyond some simple dental tool, but this is all I wanted to show today, was where you can get to with this. You can see I'm actually grabbing and pushing with this finger to really get the right amount of force right where I want it. Because this side is not behaving as nicely as the other side. One thing that can be challenging about, so excuse me, I'm working on a, um, a USB camera hooked up to my computer so that I can watch the, can watch my own preparation work on the screen instead of straining my eyes and my neck to look down at this little tiny specimen. But what I miss is the 3D information. For example, right here, the trilobite is going farther deeper into the rock. And even though it looks like I've scraped away a lot, I still have not reached the specimen. So I'd have to keep going here, and it's 
it's difficult to tell that from the camera view alone. So I have to keep just checking back and referring to the specimen to see what's really going on. Are you hearing those little squeaks? So those little squeaks are the sound of the metal against the trilobite itself. And that's not the sound we want to hear more of. It should be really just this white noise sound, scratchy sound, of, uh, of the metal against this shaley sediment. Now in a different rock that might be different noises and a lot of things will be different in a different rock. I chose an easy one for today just to demonstrate. Oops, wrong specimen. I'm going to try to do as much on here as I can. But eventually, I will have to move to some other tool. Or sharpen this one. There's a good way to sharpen it. But that's about the size of it. And as you can see, it's it's a gradual process. Lots of iterations. Try this, wash it, go back, try it again, wash it, go back, try it again. But um, pretty reliable with this kind of sediment. <clears throat> and. Uh, Someone else has a setup with a different tool that they like to use. Um, power tools of various sorts. Uh, go ahead and post them. Post your technique. Post an example. Post a live preparation session like this one. And uh, when I finish this, I'll post a finished for a picture of how it came out. Um, but not with in real ambition. This is really just a demonstration. Already better than it was. Slightly.